Hey everyone, welcome to another probably long-winded ramble of the type that you find on this channel. As you can see, it is a glorious day and I am out in the fields, more or less about a mile away from my town, which is over yonder. Can you see the church spire right there? Yes. And this is just a stream that we have, um, you know, it's like a regular walk for us. And there's cows in the distance and kind of a road that serves to transport a lot of industrial goods back and forth um, between this part of the country and mostly north, I think, which is that way. Anyway. I thought I'd really just, you know, walk and talk and do a bit of a, a check-in. I'm going to turn you around so that I can look at you right there. Hello. I am, um, I think I'm doing okay at the moment. Uh, but there's been a bit of rough weather. Basically, um, too much work not enough walking around, not enough uh, air and sunshine and all the good stuff, you know. It's, I keep having like fantasies of, <laughs> you know, a trip to the coast in uh, the south of Spain or some place like that. I've got a couple of really nice memories of places like that. So of course it's pulling, but this is what I get at the moment. And it's not so bad if I manage to get myself into a state of acceptance again. That's the whole secret. That's everything. It's my cards for this morning. First card, Nine of Swords. I said, no way. I'm not doing any more Nine of Swords. Thank you. So I stuck it back in the pack, shuffled, riffled, shuffled again, took out two others, and they were think the page of wands and temperance so I said that's better okay as you can see I'm still a bit um, you know compared to what I like to think of myself as uh, normal more composed more um, you know grown up that type of thing this is uh, the result of a couple of, I suppose, days where I just didn't know, uh, I didn't know what to do anymore. So, some of that was headbutting with my husband, who had enough of work and mileage and highways and, you know, superficial stuff. And we always seem to get at each other's throats. Um, in, in those type of moments and we just we're both traumatized people what can you say we just drive each other nuts and it's quite understandable and at some point it does resolve itself also because we both want to we don't want to fight we don't like to fight at all and it hurts so then you know back and forth and everything's kind of resolved and talked about and I figure out a couple more things like um, possessiveness in relationships can be quite natural if you love someone you tend to at least to me that's very understandable but of course it conflicts with past trauma where people would, uh, you know, sort of assume you were always there and you were supposed to be in the predictable path always. My mum and me, you know? So that's kind of some of the content of the, of the stuff that happened. And, um, on the other hand, I can see the good side of the possessiveness in the sense that you would call it something different probably by then. Uh, I don't know, it's, I'm not worried, it's just, it's all good, and at some point I just get very frustrated, just 
like the next woman. I don't know what to think anymore. And I go... I get into all sorts of annoyance. And then it takes a while for the... Um, you know? For the, for the toxins to, to be released, really. So... Um, what other thing did I want to say, really? Uh, I was... I watched uh, Jennifer's video about the white butterflies and the hammerhead shark um, that's out there and I was really interested in how she went about this because I thought the hammerhead shark was really a, a very powerful agent to, I don't know, sort of change the context in the part of of her and Jesus and she was talking. I will put her reference in the in the description so you can look it up if you want. Um, to me accessing white light at moments like this is absolutely crucial. And I was doing that just now like I don't know half an hour or so before I started my walk. I wanted to do a tiny bit of clearing because I had had like two days where it was absolutely impossible because I was so frustrated and it feels like everything in my aura is made of stone and I just can't get any movement, I can't get any lights, nothing, nothing doing, you know, and um, at that point, just now, so, an hour ago, I did manage because it's all been for now, so it's kind of ready to go. like the sun, just like that, uh, to clear out debris, negativity, uh, anything that p is personal or de determined by other people, you know, make a shift between the energies, which is mine, which isn't, and so on and so forth. However, on the other hand, the Shakti energy, or, yeah, that lava type energy, which I thought was really cool that Jennifer actually says or describes how she finds that really helpful. Um, she's made her own type of connection with that, which I think is amazing. I mean, you just have to do the work yourself and then you get results. Isn't that just crazy? So, but I'm working with Shakti Energy myself and what I find is a long-term change really long-term change and I feel that the uh, past lives the revelations manifestations etc that I've had in the past week or so they are linked to the Shakti so that's the difference I think that's just something I wanted to put out there white light has also long-lasting effects also does that, but for our uh, our nature in the body, in the emotions, in, in the visceral, you know, interactions that we have with people and with our surroundings, um, the Shakti energy will. That's yours. It's your personal Shakti that will come up and transform your life if you let it, uh, you know, one step at a time. And uh, the transformation is, I mean, it, it feels really good most of the time to me. I am ready to, to have it also, so I accept it. So that makes it, of course, a lot easier. The only uh, times lives and the you know the whole 
uh, gypsy tribe thing and the link with India and all that and the incense making that has been quite hard for me in the past week I was completely flummoxed I I was in over my head kind of thing you know so I um, incorporated or I invited my yeah somehow the tribes people to the extent that I had some form of contact with them I actually invited them into my inner lodge meditation but I put them in a back seat so if you want to know what an inner lodge meditation is that's in my channel down here somewhere it's a I think it's priceless I just made it up myself I love it it's great um, whenever I am most in doubt of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing with all this stuff. The inner lodge is the place that I go to where things find the parts of me that are there together come up with a solution for the situation that we're in. So I find that extremely helpful. It just came to me anyway, so I can't say I invented anything really. Um, so my past lives information or content or consciousness, which is like a separate part of my life, it belongs with my life. Only, not in the same way that the things that I deal with in my own life emotionally or the aspects that I've developed as a human being standing here you know that's it's different so the tribe had to go in the back seat but they're there and I found it really interesting that interacting with them to some extent feels liberating for them so that just kept coming back I thought that was really cool Whatever I do nowadays, whatever we do nowadays to engage with our past lives is liberating for that type of consciousness that is still potentially trapped or held in some previous century. So, yeah, so I thought I'd had to say that. And so, like I was saying, this past lives adventure as a whole really to me it's pretty obvious that it comes out of working with the Shakti energy a lot I still do the Shakti energy work about three times a week or so and I find it extremely helpful uh, like I said it feels really good most of the time it's warming it's comfortable and I uh, I have yeah I, I think my body's changing as well because I don't have any more headaches for about six or seven weeks or so that's incredible <laughs> I'm still not completely believing it so you guys I'm going to see whether I actually recorded anything so I'll be you know turning you over like so and yes there we are lots of fields lots of dandelions and I will be out here for a bit longer Thank you for coming along on the walk. That's actually a little gypsy camp right there. Let me zoom in. They're houses. They're not uh, mobile homes anymore, except for the one that you see out front. That's kind of like a fancy trailer. It's mostly a very quiet little camp. You don't see any activity out there, other than people walking dogs or chatting or what have you. It is springtime. Thank you for watching. You beautiful people. Thank you again and I uh, I will be back soon enough. Bye bye for now.